teenage boy, beaten, nearly drowned, and left for dead. It's beyond tragic, and a baffling whodunit, tailor-made for the tabloids. Charles Hardiman has been in a coma for the past week, and police have no leads. Trying to remove the mask of mystery that surrounds this case, police join the Hardiman family in a public plea for help. We believe somebody, you know, apparently tied him up and threw him in the lake. I just want y'all to know that whoever you are, Charles will point you out, definitely. It's been a week since Charles was medically induced into a coma, and his family keeps the faith at his bedside. They're rewarded with a small miracle. All of a sudden, his eyes open. He's awake. Hey, doctor! He started, you know, trying to use sign language to tell me who did it. Hey, you fat! Major McMillan. And that's when we called Kelly back down to the med. She calls me and says, hey, he's moving. Oh. I grabbed one of my guys. I said, we got to go. He's going to tell us what happened. Kelly knows he might not have long to get answers from Charles. Hey, I'm your friend. I'm going to help you. You hear me? This was wrong. Who done this to you? I start talking to Charles. He's struggling to tell me what's going on. And I, so I give him my notepad, and I said, write it down. Kevin? He wrote Kevin Crackhead. Okay. Kevin yeah, does. She told me who Kevin Chirac was and that they identified him as the crackhead from Grand Junction, Tennessee. Who was with him? Gregory? He also gave us uh, the name of Gregory Jenkins. This is shocking news that hits close to home. Gregory is a family friend. Those were the people that tried to hurt you know, Charles. I didn't believe it. Hopefully when I come see you tomorrow, I'm going to have them in jail. You hear me? Yes. I'm glad to see you doing better. We've got our guys identified. Now we're on a manhunt. 